Hey y'all, I've been asked this question a lot in our real estate group on Facebook, which is called RV, REI. So if you're not a part of it, go to Facebook and join that group. And people in that group have been asking me, how do you know when it's time to hire someone? Who do you hire first? And how am I supposed to pay them? So we're gonna talk about that today. My name is April Crosley. I'm a real estate investor based out of Berks County, Pennsylvania. I flip houses here, we do wholesaling, I buy small multifamily properties. We recently purchased a mobile home park and we also partner on syndications in other states and do a little bit of private lending. And at one time, I was at this point in my business where I was doing everything myself and wasn't sure who to hire first and how the heck was I going to pay this person. So I'm going to tell you how I figured that out because it doesn't take long until you get super burned out from doing everything yourself, okay? And as entrepreneurs, sometimes we're just super controlling or very busy in our day that we don't take the time to stop and outsource anything till we're completely overwhelmed and feel like our business is crashing down on us. And that's the point I was at. I was like, I am quitting my business, this is too overwhelming. And a good friend of mine was like, don't quit, just learn how to do it differently. So I hired a coach who taught me how to do things differently. And that is when I started hiring people out. So here is how you know who you should hire first. You're going to start with what do you despise? What do you despise doing in your business? So my coach challenged me to sit down and think about all the things I do on a daily basis. So take one day, just write out on a piece of paper every single task you do and circle what tasks you hate the most. For me, it was bills. I hate writing out bills. I hate bookkeeping. I hate tracking my bills. I mean, you're flipping houses and you own rental properties. Bills never stop coming. They come all the time. Bills for your flip projects, taxes, insurance, utility bills, bills for your multifamily properties. I hated doing bills more than anything to the point I would just stop checking the mail, which isn't good. So I was like sticking my head in the sand so that I wouldn't have to open any bills. So I knew the first thing I had to outsource was bookkeeping. Unfortunately, I'm gonna tell you how I pay everyone in my business. So maybe fortunately or unfortunately, bookkeeping isn't really one of those things you can pay out of like the profit of a flip, okay? A bookkeeper is typically paid an hourly rate. So I had to assess my financial situation and say, okay, this is how much a bookkeeper is gonna need per hour. This is how many hours they think they're gonna spend a week on my business. And I had to cut out something or make more money somewhere or set some money aside so that I could pay a bookkeeper. But it was worth it to get that stress off of my shoulders so I could focus on growing my business. So the bookkeeper was the first thing I hired because it was the thing I despised the most. So I encourage you to sit down and think about what do you hate in your business? <laughs> Instead of what you love about it, what do you hate about it? And get that off your plate first. Hire one person at a time. So when I hired a bookkeeper, it wasn't like I hired a bookkeeper, then brought on a partner, then hired someone else, then hired someone else immediately. That's a huge mistake that people make. Everybody talks about having a team, having a flip business, owning a rental business, and having a team, grow your team. You should have a team, you shouldn't work alone. And you're like, how am I gonna pay all these people on this team? It's a balance of making enough money, and actually having money that you can pay other people to do other things, but knowing that you need other people to take stuff off your plate so you can keep growing your business. There is no easy answer, but you're not gonna find that balance by hiring everyone at once, okay? Huge mistake, can be very detrimental to your business. So hire people as you need them. That's the best advice I got from one of my coaches. I needed a bookkeeper, so I brought on the bookkeeper and hired them. Then the next person I needed was a partner to do acquisitions, so like to take seller calls. So I was thinking, what, do, what else do I hate in my business? I'm burnout on talking to sellers. I talked to sellers for years. I did everything in my business before I hired out to anyone else. So the second thing I hired was an acquisitions manager. After that, 
I thought I really don't like overseeing rehab projects, like dealing with contractors, picking out supplies and paint colors. I'm terrible at it. So I hired a project manager. So how do you pay these people? The bookkeeper is hourly. The acquisitions managers are paid a percentage of your profit. Your project manager is paid a percentage of your profit on your flip. I know nobody ever wants to give up any money out of their profit. <laughs> we want to keep all the profit for ourselves. But if you're not having to take seller calls and you're not having to oversee contractors and drive to projects, you can focus on things that are important like marketing, SEO, your website, growing your business so that you can do more deals. So it actually really isn't a lot when you're paying them a small percentage of your project. So I hired one at a time. So this is kind of the flow of our business now. I still do our marketing, okay? And then we have an acquisitions manager. We actually have two that take calls and do contracts with sellers. They are paid a portion of the profit every month. So whatever profit we bring in every month, they're paid a portion of that. It's motivating for them because if we're not closing deals, they're not getting paid, okay? So they're paid a per portion of our monthly profit. Then when calls come in, they set an appointment with our project manager and our project manager is the one that goes out and meets sellers, looks at the house, send us, sends us pictures, sends us a report, and the project manager, if we end up flipping the house, oversees the project and coordinates all the contractors so that I don't have to take the time to do that. The project manager is not paid during the project. They're paid at the end. So when the house resells, the project manager gets a percentage of the profit from the flip project, or you pay them a flat um, rate on the flip project. It just depends what you guys negotiate, what they're happy with and what you're happy with. And then after the appointment with the project manager, it goes back to the acquisitions manager who makes an offer. And I'll go over this in a little more detail in an upcoming video with you guys. And then once the acquisitions manager negotiates with the seller and puts it under contract, it goes to what's called the transaction coordinator. My transaction coordinator is also paid a flat fee per project and isn't paid until the deal closes. So the transaction coordinator's job is to get the contract to the title company, switch over utilities and get the whole deal to the settlement table. So if we start the deal and it doesn't make it to the settlement table, the transaction coordinator doesn't get paid on that project. So everybody's invested in getting the project done, making good profit on the project. Cause if your project managers paid a percentage of your profit, there's again, that balance. They're not necessarily going to use the cheapest materials and the cheapest labor, but they're going to make sure that the project moves along in a timely fashion. So you have less holding costs and they're going to be conscious of how much money they're spending on your supplies, materials, contractors, everything like that, because the less they spend, the bigger the profit, okay? But that's a balance with you can't go cheap, cheap, cheap because you want the house to look nice and you want the work to be done well so that you're selling it for the highest price you can and making the most profit that you can, okay? Then after we go to closing, our transaction coordinator is also responsible for getting all of our seller reviews that come back in. So she takes care of all that, but she is paid when the property closes. And then she does this after closing, she'll go back to the seller and ask for a review, which is super important for you in your business to get Google reviews or reviews for your website. So just to recap, hire out what you despise first, okay? Sometimes that's a salary position. Most of the time you can pay people out of the project, which I highly recommend because then everyone is invested in the project, making the most money that it can in your business. So don't be overwhelmed with all the people you could hire. It's actually good for you to go through your business and have to do all the jobs and all the roles that everyone does because then you can train people better and you have more empathy for what they're going through. Like I have empathy for what my project manager goes through when she's working with contractors and having a difficult time with them 
because I've been there, okay? So one piece at a time slowly. Don't hire the whole team at once. I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you're looking for more information, click like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our future videos on YouTube. You can also check us out in our group on Facebook, RVREI, and check out our website, aprilcrosley.us, and you can follow us on Instagram at aprilcrosley.